Welcome to the first ever cycling esports show powered by Zwift. Yes, that's right. Ollie and I will be taking you deep into the world of esports racing. We will cover both the men's and women's KISS Super League series and as much as we can in between. This week on the Cycling Esports Show, we will be looking at what virtual racing actually is and we'll be bringing you up to date with all the action from the first ever Pro League, the KISS Super League. Hint, it's been a cracker of a season so far. So first things first, what's virtual racing all about? Well, as a concept, virtual racing has developed rapidly over the last few years. Beginning from a hardcore few of early Zwift adopters, it has now become its own discipline. Cyclists from around the world are using Zwift to supplement their outdoor riding. That's right, and if you've never tried it, it's something I would highly, highly recommend. For sure, it's the most fun you can have on an indoor trainer. Virtual racing has grown at such a rate that it now has its own dedicated series called the KISS Super League. Taking place on indoor cycling platform Zwift, pro teams now have the opportunity to compete against each other virtually. There are two leagues, men's and women's. The men's league consists of 16 teams. That's 14 professional teams, a Zwift Academy dream team, that's comprised of Zwift Academy semi-finalists, and a Zwift all-star team comprised of the best amateur Zwift racers from around the world. The women's league consists of eight teams. That's six UCI pro teams, and like the men's, a Zwift Academy dream team comprised of Zwift Academy semi-finalists and a Zwift all-star team of the best female Zwifters from across the world. The KISS Super League is a team-based competition, so what matters is the points that your riders score each round based on finishing position, which go towards the overall standings. The team with the most cumulative points at the end of the season will be the winning team. It's as simple as that. There are 10 rounds of racing for the men and eight for the women this season. Most races take the form of a criterium with laps around a circuit, and the racing is done and dusted well within the hour. Needless to say, it's highly competitive and full gas stuff. Let's have a closer look at what they've been getting up to this season so far. The men's action kicked off at a special launch event in London, with Team Wiggins racing live among an esteemed audience of cycling glitterati. The smart money was on the seasoned Zwifters from UCI Continental Team Madison Genesis, especially Ian Bibby, who seems to win every race he enters on the platform. True to form, it was Bibby who prevailed over the Volcano Flat course in Watopia, with two riders from the Zwift All-Stars taking the other podium spots. Round two saw the first successful breakaway with Team Ribble's Ed Hopper after a brilliant attack with a whopping nine kilometers still to race to take the win. Rounds three and four gave us back-to-back -back wins for John Mould of Madison Genesis and a new threat in the form of Zwift Academy Dream Team rider Alex West, who podiumed in both races. And it was West who would continue that form powering home in first place in round five, thanks to a beautifully deployed aero power-up, with Ian Bibby bouncing back to record his second win of the season in the hills of Watopia in round six. So after six rounds of racing, it's Madison Genesis sitting pretty at the top of the standings, with the Dream Team in second and the All-Stars in third. The Women's League got underway live from Canyons HQ in Germany, with the super-fast Watopia flat course awaiting the riders. Again, it was the riders from the Zwift Academy Dream Team and the Zwift All-Stars who were catching the eye. The race came down to a bunch print, with Louise Huback of the All-Stars just edging it in a photo finish ahead of Simone Boulard of Showair 20 in second. Boulard continued her impressive form into round two around the punishing Innsbruck ring course with a smart well-timed sprint to the finish, giving her a second podium and first win of the season, for sure the one to watch so far. So after two rounds, it's the Zwift All-Stars leading the way with Showair 2020 in second and their dream team in third. So that's the story of the season so far. We caught up with two of the stars of the first season, Alex West of the Zwift Academy Dream Team and Simone Ballard of Show Air 2020 to ask them what the secret to virtual racing really is. I think just being a very versatile rider is 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 the key to yeah being on the podium and every round I've done so far. I mean, um, I don't think I have a secret. It's just that we take it super seriously, like I said, and. Uh, we are focused and determined to um, race aggressively. I think knowing the courses for sure is definitely um, definitely a benefit. And those those sprint finishes, I mean, even knowing them five, racing them five times, you, you still don't know how to perfect the timing or anything like that. And it's a bit of a lottery in the end. That... Yeah, certainly in the men's league, it seems to be that the people who know how to use the aero boost 
best are, are winning. Yeah, actually, I realized that on the first round. Uh, during the sprint, I had the, um, the truck boost, like the little car boost. Uh, and the other girl that uh, won had the aero boost on the first round. So I was like, oh, the aero boost seemed pretty pretty fast and uh, I was I was glad to have um, to receive it uh, on the round two with one lap to go I was super excited I was like yeah I have a boost so I kept it for the hand and um, I tried to use it wise, wisely at the end and uh, yeah it really makes a big difference I think a lot of a lot of um, people in the kids super league expected that light on the road if you can just sit in uh, if you're a sprinter and such, let's just sit in, wait for the sprint. No, you can't do that on Zwift. I mean, there are no sprinters on Zwift. There's just those guys who can sprint um, after attacking. I mean, no one no one sits in on Zwift and just looks for the sprint. You have to go with the attacks, follow those splits. And I think those new guys, they just, they just expect... To be able to sit in the bunch when in reality you're still working hard no matter where you are in the peloton. So Ollie, we're all dying to know, what has been your highlight of this season? Uh, good question, Kira. Now for me, the story of the season so far has undoubtedly been how well the riders with the Zwift experience have been doing. Yeah, I've definitely noticed that having experience on Zwift does seem to be helping the riders out. Just like in the men's league, the women's league is also having the same thing with the Zwift all-star team actually leading the way. That's right, Kira. Now, if you look at the women's league, so we're only two rounds into the women's league, but in round one, okay, the Zwift All-Stars had a whopping four riders in the top 10. And in round two, they had three riders in the top 10. So these are the amateur races. These are the races that know all about Zwift racing. And they're the ones that are beating the pros who just don't have the experience. Now, in terms of the power-ups, there are obviously three power-ups you can use when you're racing. Those are the feather power-up, which makes you lighter. They are the drafting boost, which increases the drafting effect you feel when you're riding behind another rider. And there's the aero power-up as well. And it certainly seems that far and far away, the aero power-up is the most coveted so far. If you deploy it at exactly the right moment, can help you cross the line in first place. For example, we've seen a lot of the riders using this in their finishing sprint. For example, Alex West was telling us that the best time to deploy it is about 500 meters from the finish line. So for him, he reckons that he should be using it around 500 meters still to race. Now for most people, that's very early, right? And you think maybe I'll hold it in reserve just a couple hundred meters further, but no, according to Alex West, he's the expert get it out early. And one of the things that you will notice if you look through the results on Zwift is that it's often not the rider who's put out the highest average power that will win the race. If you look at the watts per kilo figures at the end of each race, often you'll have riders who have done much less on a watts per kilo basis that will be finishing higher than those riders who have a higher average power. The reason for that is because these riders are the ones who are drafting more effectively. They know the course more effectively, so they know when to put out more power and when to hold back a bit. And also, critically, they know how to use their power-ups. Which, in some ways, actually emulates real racing, because if you know the course better and you are more aware of saving energy, then actually you can have a better race. So I think that it's quite interesting that it's, it's very similar. Exactly, and I think, you know, we've got five more rounds of racing on the men's side and we've got six or seven more rounds on the women's side. So there should be a lot more fun to be had in this first season and we're really looking forward to seeing how it goes. Next week, the men's league heads to New York City to take on the mighty Metropolitan Circuit, a testing 20 kilometer loop through Central Park. The women will also be battling it out through Central Park as they take on the Gotham Grind Reverse. Join us same time, same place next week. Bye. Yeah.